Hey, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I'm at the Collider studio at the Kia Telluride Supper Suite at Sundance, uh, and I'm here with the folks behind Horse Girl. Um, let me start by saying how much I enjoyed this movie. Um, I, I really dug this. You guys have the premiere tonight, I think. That's right. Thank um, you. Right. So how many interviews have you done with people who have actually seen it? You know, Probably actually like a good amount yesterday. Yeah. Well, that's a good percentage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went for the percentage, cool. Um, I, I hate asking the generic question, but a lot of people watching this will not seen the movie yet. So can you sort of talk a little bit about what it's about? Yeah. Uh, the movie is about a character, Sarah, played by me. Uh, she works in a craft store. She's a bit socially isolated. She grew up riding horses. She still has a strong connection to her horse. And she begins to have a series of strange and very lucid dreams. And she begins to sort of lose her grip on reality. That's almost like you've practiced that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking points. Right. Um, uh, one of the things I really dig about this is that it is unlike uh, other movies. I, I love original films, and you guys uh, absolutely crafted one with this. I also like that there's an unreliable narrator. So a lot of people can watch this. And actually, instead of me talking, can talk a little bit about the, fa the fact that it's, you know, you have an unreliable narrator, and now you can, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. I think one of our main objectives was to put the audience in Sarah's shoes as she's going through everything that she's going through. She spends a lot of the movie pretty confused and terrified and, and having trouble knowing what's real and, and what's in her mind. And we wanted the audience going on that journey with her and, and empathizing with her and, and really being inside her head. It gets to a point where the audience really is meant to be right inside her mind, uh, kind of seeing how she's navigating it. And I'm glad that you felt that way. <laughs> well, for the two of you, this was a very, most people think that, you know, you have a fully fleshed out script and that you step on set and you're doing those words with maybe a little improv. This, that was not the case making this movie. Uh, could the three of you sort of talk about that? Yeah, I mean, the last three movies I've made have been working this way where we work off of a pretty detailed outline without actually writing the dialogue out. But the beats of what they're saying are generally in the descriptions of the, the outline. And um, I just found it's like a really useful way to get performances that I feel like are really fresh and present and sort of unexpected and it keeps everyone on their toes and um, it sort of just keeps everyone engaged and I think it's if you find the right actors who can pull it off I think it's really rewarding yeah do you want to talk about that sure. process um, I actually enjoyed it I think it, uh, it's like freeing and it's not like it's like oh we don't know what's gonna happen make it up it's like it was a very detailed outline and we basically knew what we we're gonna say so it just like allows the dialogue to flow kind of naturally and um, I like to make stuff up and goof off, so it was good. And then we would shut it down immediately. With John, no goofing yeah. off. Yeah. This is a very serious but I still got, I still got some shit in there. Well, we'll see tonight. <laughs> we'll see tonight. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen it yet? I have seen it. I think it's gorgeous. Oh. You saw it on a small screen. <laughs> I saw it on a small screen. Got it. Um, don't, let's not talk about how small it was. <laughs> <laughs> the optimal place to watch this is <laughs> on your phones. So, <laughs> Apple Watches. <laughs> like and subscribe. Right. Re refrigerators <laughs> and like dishwashers are the main venue. Uh, yeah, it, <laughs> I have so much to say about this, but I want to act. I, I am curious that you do have a detailed synopsis, but I would imagine with the improv process, it allows for people to maybe come up with some ideas you're not expecting in the moment. Did you ever go back to a scene you had shot and maybe add something as a result of something you learned during the shoot? No, because given the schedule, there's not really a lot of time to like, it, you have to be really careful with this kind of stuff. And we were shooting out of order. So you have to kind of plan everything out. Otherwise you paint yourself into a crazy corner. So we, we, you know, we would do a scene, maybe like a scene that would happen later from something that we anticipated would be going a certain way. But then we realized if we do this, it can lead to this. But you have to kind of set it up like before it's too late. You can't really like change things up. There's no way, we don't do reshoots. We don't have time for that. Also the way that we wrote the movie, <laughs> there, there's a lot of complex stuff <laughs> happening that, that really have to do with time, the essence of time, Sarah's reality. Um, so we were tracking that very closely. And yeah, I think it would be it would be interesting being like, and now say whatever you want. And then often we'd come into the scenes and be like, but you do have to hit these specific things because there's some major plot points <laughs> that we want the audience to follow. Uh, I'm always curious about the editing room because uh, that's the final rewrite. Talk a little bit about maybe what surprised you when you stepped in the editing room. And let's start with that. I mean, the main thing is when you're shooting something, you think everything is absolutely essential and you don't think you can lose anything at all and everything is building towards this thing. But then when you start editing, you realize, you know, actually we can lose this scene and it's like, you know, crisper and it, it flows better. So there's like probably like three scenes or parts that we kind of cut out mm -hmm. that I thought would be devastating to the film, but in, you know, after watching it, you don't really need it as much. So 
yeah, that's like you, you, you think you, you can actually accomplish a lot more sometimes in things than. Yeah, I also feel like. Um, we have a guest. Come in. Join us. Yay. Hi, Debbie. Debbie Ryan. Just say your name and height. <laughs> I'm Debbie Ryan. I'm five five, unless you need me to be five six. Oh wow! Five five's good. Five five. Um, five four and a half. Um, another thing that I really think that we noticed, and this is speaking to what you were saying earlier about um, this unreliable narrator, is like while we're shooting it. Uh, you know, you're feeling like, oh, the audience is really, we want them to be right there with Sarah through everything she's experiencing. But for a lot of the movie, I, I'm not talking much at all. I'm reading, I'm like getting information visually. And we realized, I think in the edit that the audience wasn't actually getting that information maybe until a couple scenes later. and We didn't want them to be behind. So I feel like that was a big part of the editing process, kind of splicing in things so you could really understand what I'm thinking when I'm thinking it. Completely. Uh, for all four of you, I would imagine making this was both challenging and a lot of fun. Uh, if you could maybe share a memory from the st from filming, something that like stands out, you know, whether it be a crazy day, whether it be just a fun day, whatever comes to mind. I think the main thing is it, it, this movie was a really intense movie to shoot, but it was also like the most joyful, fun experience I think I've ever had. And um, something that I thought was really beautiful was when there were challenges, instead of it, you know, like falling down to like placing blame on someone who messed up, everyone kind of came together. And there's this one scene where um, there's light is supposed to be coming in through her bedroom door, like a bright white light. And when we built the set, the moldings on the door were kind of blocking that light. So, and we had to shoot because we're like on a crazy schedule. So we had like, I think two minutes be between setups to make sure this thing would work. And like everyone from every department, like the, the grip, the gaffer, production designers, like set dresser, like I think maybe even a transport guy, they were just like jackhammering this molding to get it off with like crowbars and stuff oh, yeah. and got it off. Like I have a video of it, but it's like amazing how hard they were working. And it, it was, was just like- All hands on deck immediately, no hesitation, no, you know, it was a lot of heart. Yeah, it was like, it's, I mean, I think people are obviously all professional, but you don't always get like this level of commitment and engagement from like everyone from top to bottom. And it was absolutely like, it, it was like so heartwarming and amazing. Um, I think, uh, you know, for me, it was very interesting, as Jeff was saying, you know, we shot out of order. It was basically we had to shoot by location. So at every location we'd get to, we would sh then shoot in order. So every two to five days, I was like resetting to Sarah at the beginning of the movie and then like ramping mm -hmm. up to some, you know, intense stuff. And so it was really fun. You know, she's a really isolated character, too. I feel like the week that we shot with you two in the apartment <laughs> was the best thing to do this reset and shoot the, We I guess we called it the party scene, even though it's only the four of us dancing mm -hmm. and like the characters are drinking and smoking weed and like it's so out of character for Sarah and we got to dance. I wish, I mean in the original cut of the movie I feel like our dance scene was like 20 minutes long. <laughs> I have but to ask you, does it, does, it, does it rival Ex Machina and Oscar Isaac? Do you guys have I you mean, seen that movie? Uh, I definitely saw it Right. and I believe it does. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, this might sound dumb, but this was like one of the chiller movies I've worked on. <laughs> you know, and um, He's worked on two movies. Right. No, no, I, I've worked on actually oh, so many actually in amazing <laughs> films. But yeah, uh, this was really chill and uh, the hours were cool. Everyone on set was cool. Jeff kept saying how much he loved the crew the whole time, which I thought was nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, I would say one of my favorite scenes is we shoot this scene in a cemetery and it was um, at night and there were foxes running around, and it's well, sort of a- Baby foxes, do you yeah. remember? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I remember, I was there. <laughs> Some were babies, so, and that's, <laughs> but, that was even cuter. Go on. But uh, okay. it just added sort of a surreal vibe to this already surreal movie, so it was fun to like act and then go sit in chairs with the crew. And it was just a, uh, I'm still talking. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pass on the mic. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, I mean, there was like a nervousness and an anticipation going into it, not knowing what their process was and knowing they sort of were really locked into it and had a distinct vision and sort of knew what it was gonna be and not knowing how I was gonna find my place in that um, was daunting and then the second I got on set it was so, just like they were so disarming and it was so cool and collaborative and so informed by just having the conversation and just finding it and so the first day I, I went from like just p paralyzed with fear, just being like, I, we're gonna see how this goes, to by the end of the day, it was so chill, it was so encouraging and collaborative. And I remember that day um, at lunch, they were doing a thing where they would raffle mm -hmm. something off to a different crew member every day. I mean. Yeah, we did it every day. Yeah, every, we did every day. Every day. day. <laughs> every day. If it was day. a night shoot, we would do it every day. night. 
Yeah. I got it. I, I, I'm a little bit curious. When you obviously are making this on a limited schedule, a limited budget, limited time, so how does that sort of um, affect like the amount of takes you get to do on set? Is it one of these things where it's like you know you really got to do it in two? Or were there days, you know what I mean? Like how does – Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's – the, 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 you got to do the calculus in your head as it's happening. But, you know, having done it a couple times, you sort of know – you could do triage in your head and you're like, yes, of course, I want this thing to be perfect, but like you also are going to sacrifice things later on. So these guys are awesome. And like it, these, you're talking about micro adjustments at that point by like takes. And if we got it, we got it. Of course, like I wish we could go, you know, 50 takes per thing, but that's also exhausting for actors. And, you know, it's you just it's it's just there, there's a there's a sort of flow to it. And you sort of feel like when it's OK, but you also don't want to like push it too hard because it's going to end up like sacrificing something later. And what was helpful, and you talked about this before in terms of the way that we do the improvisation, is like the dialogue is pretty much locked in after you do the first few takes of the wide shot. And then we're pretty much staying, you know, sometimes our script supervisor would even type it up so we could look at it and be like, great, that's what we just said. And now we'll say it again. Um, so that made it quicker when we got into coverage. So if you don't mind me asking, so on all the scenes, are you doing the wide shot first? Yeah, yeah. it would be like whatever, if there's like two people or three people, I usually do like a, the, a two or three shot. I don't really do like master shots, but it'd be like two or three shot. And then we do like three or four takes, find it, it, and out. then lock it in. It's not like every single take is like a mystery. We're like, where is it going to go? We pretty much know what's going to happen from that point on, and then just get coverage. And it's pretty straightforward. So it's not it's not like as like who knows what's going to happen. It's it's we're it's like a little less go with it, and it's a little more like that was great. Do that again plus this. <laughs> right. So by the time your close up comes, you're ready to rock. <laughs> You're like, I just memorized the lines <laughs> that I just made up. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all such huge fans of Glow uh, at Collider. Thank you. And uh, I know this is the upcoming last season. What yes. what can you tease and when are you filming? Oh, goodness. I don't think I can tease anything because I truly don't know. I've been trying to apply it out. You know, we're out of Vegas for sure, so I know that. And um, we start shooting at the beginning of March. I'll be directing an episode again this season so I can tell you that <laughs> right. Congrats and again. I thank you I really don't know I mean I, I'm I, I'm assuming that Debbie is going to be running her network that she just bought and I'm very curious to see where we find Ruth on her journey and I hope those ladies reunite as soon as possible uh thank you all so much for coming in thank you seriously I hope everyone who's watching this ends up uh, when is it on Netflix February, February 7th. 7th. Right. So it's really soon. Yeah, next yeah, Friday. I was going to say. Um, <laughs> listen, have a fantastic premiere. I hope everyone loves it. I hope your film gets sold. No, I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, but a huge thank you to Kia again for being such an awesome sponsor. And congrats on the movie, guys. Thank you so thank much you for so coming. Much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you.